This is Fiona with another Cyan Trigger tutorial. Today we will build a player join leave chime system using multiple switches that control the same thing. We'll cover how to make different Cyan Triggers talk to each other, as well as a basic overview of if statements. Check the description below for useful download links. Be sure to get the latest version of the VRChat SDK and Cyan Trigger. There's also a downloadable version of this prefab. What I've got here is a system for a player join leave chime. So when someone joins or leaves the world, it'll play a sound. And I want to have a join sound and a leave sound. And I want those to be separate. So let's go ahead and add these as variables. Now I could just start with assign triggers, but putting them as variables makes them very easy to find and change, especially if this is a prefab you want to use again and again. So let's just go ahead and add the variables. We're going to add an audio source. Okay, and I will name this one join leave chime. And I've already set up an audio source right here, which is just a 2D audio source with very simple settings. So I'll drag that in there. Now I'm going to need an audio clip. So we're going to type in audio clip. This one will be join sound. And then another one audio clip right here. And this one will be leave sound. Okay, so this one I've already got. Uh, let's go ahead and put this over here so we can see it. We've got a player join sound. And then here, there's my player leave sound. Okay. And so the very simplest thing that we would do in this case would be to add an event. And we're going to have this on player join. And all that's going to do is play the sound from our audio source. So let's go ahead and add that event. The way you do that is you're going to add an event, which is uh, an action, which is audio source, play one shot. And in there, right now, these are the things that we need to put in. And I'm going to add an audio source. I'm going to choose a variable. This lets me pick from my list up here. Join leave chime. And then the thing I'm going to choose is also a variable. Let's me pick from this list. Join sound. We would do the same thing for the leave sound. The difference now is we might want to give players an option of turning this off and on. So let's say you're in the world. A lot of people are coming and going. That sounds getting annoying. Let's give them a switch to be able to turn that off and on. Um, the way that that's going to work then is let's use a Boolean. A Boolean is just sort of yes or no type of variable. And then we're going to call this chime enabled. All right. So right now we're going to put it to true. So that way it's on by default. Um, now that means that when the player joins, we don't want to automatically necessarily play this sound. I'm going to collapse this just to get this kind of out of the way, but we want to know if we've enabled this or not. So if it's disabled, we don't want to play. If it's enabled, we do want it to play. So we're going to add in an if statement. An if statement is a programming uh, term, but it is very easy to understand because it's just as if you were speaking the sentence. If chime is enabled, play the sound, else do nothing. That's basically what we want to do. So let's go ahead and add that. This is going to be located under special if. Now here's where it gets a little complicated, so follow along. Once you learn how to do this in sign triggers, you'll be off to the races. But just getting up to speed with how the if conditions work takes a little bit of learning. So we've added the if. It automatically has put in a condition and a condition body. The condition is the test. So I want to say here um, is chime enabled. I like to and make sure that this is a unique name. Don't name it the same as anything you have up here. Give it a unique name so you don't get confused. Okay. And so now that's the name of the test. Basically, this is the Boolean. This is necessarily Boolean. It's going to be a yes or no. That's the, the whether the test has passed or failed. Now let's add in the test itself. So this is going to be a bool equals test. And now here's the other thing. Notice that this is down at the bottom. You see how this little arrow with the if, if you collapse it, this remains on the outside. That means it's not in there. We need to drag this into the condition and it's going to end up right below it here. Okay. So let's put in our test. If chime enabled, that's one up here is true. Then 
that is a result, a yes or no. And that's what is gonna make this pass or fail. So this is our test, here's the answer. If that answer is yes, then we will continue on to the next thing. If it is no, we don't do whatever is in here. And the thing we wanna do in there is, well, play that sound. So there's our audio source action. I'm not gonna drag that into there. Okay, we can check that this is all contained by collapsing, right? So everything's inside our if, that's great. Everything inside our condition right there, everything inside our condition body. So now it will only play that sound if the chime is enabled. That's pretty great. So now let's do uh, the unplayered leave, which is really easy to do because we have our actions, our if, same thing. We're just going to duplicate this event right here. Duplicate the event. And now we're going to change this from on player joined to on player left. And then let's check our audio source. We just want to change that down here to leave sound. Otherwise, it's exactly the same. We're still checking if we've enabled it. And if we have, we're going to leave it. Okay, there. That's, that's pretty great. All right, so now if we just had one switch, if we just wanted to toggle this off and on, we could put a collider on this object and do an on interact uh, that will toggle chime enabled. But we want multiple switches. We want to put one um, by spawn. We want to put one by the mirror. We want to put one, you know, somewhere else in the world. So we need a way of making sure that all those things can do the same toggle and uh, have it all work together. And in this case, I also like switches that have an indicator of if something is off or on. So we're all going to need to know if chime is enabled. So let's set that up. So rather than putting the switch on this object, we're gonna make a new object. And I've got this little sphere down here already. So that's the one that we're gonna use. And under that, I've also got a little audio source because I also like to have feedback on a button. All right, so um, here on our sphere, we've just got the basic sphere stuff. Let's add our sign trigger. Okay, and now here is how I like to sync up different variables that are all kind of doing the same thing, but on different objects. So remember up here on our chime uh, player object, we have this thing called chime enabled, which is this Boolean. That's basically what the switch is toggling, right? So I want to have something similar here. So I'm gonna call this one a Boolean, chime enabled, and I'm gonna put red. This is just how I like to name things to know that this one is secondary to the top one. Okay, and I also want to put in a couple more variables because I know I'm going to be wanting to change the material on this to look off or on. You may want to do something else with your switches, so we're going to need a couple things. We'll need a renderer, and we'll call this button visuals, and we're going to need some materials, and we'll call this on material, and then another one which will be another material, and we'll call this one off material. Okay, so our renderer is just gonna be this object right here, the one that we have here, and then our on material, uh, look, we got a nice bright blue button on, and for off material, let's pick a dark gray. And we got one there, that's good. Okay, so if we just drop a bunch of these switches in, they need to know uh, what they should look like on the start. We want to make sure that this is controlling it. So like the default right here is true by default. So we're gonna add in um, a couple of events. And the first one is just gonna be get what the current state is and make our button look correct. So I'm gonna add an event and this is gonna be a custom. I'm gonna name this one update state. And then we can call this whenever something happens that needs to change the way this button looks. Okay, so now in our update state, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is get the value of chime enabled. So the way that this works, this is how you get variables between sign trigger objects. You actually look for the udon behavior on them and you're gonna do get and set program variable. So first let's get the program variable. And so this you're just gonna, and every sign trigger comes with a matching udon behavior. This is what the sign trigger, when it's all baked in, turns into an udon behavior. You don't need to worry about these, just leave them alone. But sometimes you need to reference them, for example, when you're trying to get variables between sign triggers. So we're gonna just go ahead and drag in that one. 
That's the one we're trying to get, and we're trying to get Chime enabled off of that one. Now I type that in. You're gonna screw this up, I guarantee. You're gonna forget what it's called. You're gonna spell something differently. Go over, find where it is. Go ahead, do a rename. Control C, go back to where you were gonna use it, and then just do a little Control V. That way you know you've got exactly the right, the right variable name. Okay, and then we're gonna save this in Chime enabled red. Do you see what I did there? We read the value of Chime enabled, which is existing over on this object, and we're saving it in Chime enabled red. Okay, so we are getting the state. Now let's do something about it. Um, so we want another one of those if statements, remember? So if it is on, let's use the on material. If it is off, let's use the off material. So let's put in, remember, special if. And then our condition. I'm going to say the condition is, is button on. All right. And if the button is on, we are going to renderer set material. Make sure we drag that into here. Okay. And then here we can put in our variables, picking them from the list up there. And this is going to be on material. Now what's our test? How do we check if our button is on? Let's set in another bool equals bool equals. Okay. Put this up there in the condition body. Here's our test. So if chime enabled red is true, then uh, is button on is true. Okay. All right. So now we can turn our button on. What if our button is off? Well, in our last example of the if, we didn't do anything. It's either play a sound or don't play a sound. In this case, we want to do something different if this test fails. And that's where we use the else. So that's also under special, else. And then all I'm going to do is duplicate this event, duplicate, and drag this one down into the else and off material. Okay? So if the button is on, it will pass this little test here. Chime enabled red is true. Turned it on with the material, else use the off material. That's all we have to do to update that state of that button. And so anytime we call this, this update state, it'll go check. And when after it's checked, it will uh, uh, set the material correctly. Great. Okay. So there's our custom update state. Now, what does a button do? It needs to actually interact and, and do the toggle, right? So let's add the toggle behavior itself. All right. So we're going to call this one a custom and we're going to name this toggle. Come here. Here we go. Toggle. Okay. So the first thing that we need to do to toggle is to find out where the state is right now. If you remember, we did this before. So let's just copy it from here. That's this option, this action right here. So let's duplicate it. Did it duplicate? There it is. And now let's drag it from that event down into this one. Oh, that's handy. We don't have to set this up again. Okay. Let's find out if that chime is enabled. Now let's toggle it. The fancy thing for toggling is this thing called unary negation. That's just programmer for toggle. All right. So that same variable chime enabled red, we're going to flip it and send it back out. Okay. So we say we take that in, we negate it, and now we're going to send it out. So if it was false, it'll be true. If it was true, it would be false. Now we want to give it back. So we've toggled it, but we now need to give it back to that parent object there. So let's do another udon behavior, except instead of get program variable, we're going to set program variable. Same thing, right? The same thing, this one right here. Okay. So now we are going to put in chime enabled. Again, I'm going to type this, but you should probably copy paste. See, I almost missed the D there. And we're going to send, what value will we send? We will send chime enabled red, which is the one we just flipped right up here. Okay. All right. There's our toggle. So after we toggle it though, we're going to need to check to see if, if this has actually uh, changed. Now, if we did it in this object, it would work for this switch, but we want it to work for any switch that we might make, which means that we need to have a way of sending that to all of the switches. And so we're going to do that up here. Okay. And then one nice thing of doing this, the way that you can get these variables to talk to each other and always stay updated is to use on variable changed. 
And on variable changed, we are going to add that event on variable changed. And here under variable, pick which one we're looking for. And we want to have chime enabled. So whenever chime enabled changes, and that's if any button toggles it and sends it back, it will have changed it. And we want to then call update state on every single button. And so there's some ways you can set this up to do it automatically. We're just going to do it manually for now because we're not going to have that many of these. And so sign trigger, send custom event. Okay. And here, instead of variable, we're going to say input. This is where we drag in all the buttons we have. So let's just take this button right there. We're going to drag it in. And the thing we're looking to do, remember, was call update state. So let's put it in there. Okay. So let's finish this button and then we can duplicate it and we can add the, any of our duplicates to this list now. Okay, so after we've gotten these two customs, we've got update state, we've got toggle, we need a way to make that actually happen, which would be to add an interact. So let's do interact. And the two things we want to have on interact are, first action is going to be sign trigger, send custom event, and we want to actually do the toggle. The other thing I want to do is play a sound. Audio source and play one shot. This time, I'm not going to bother putting these in, up in the variables. I could if I want, but I'm just going to use the old dragger in like this. And let's see, I had like a pen click that we're going to use right there. Okay, so now when we click this button, it should uh, make a sound calls toggle, toggle flips it, sends it back up here. This one detects it as change, tells every switch to change as well. Okay, we've made our interact. The last thing that we need to do is to make sure everything syncs up at the beginning. So you notice here we've got chime enabled red is one value, and up here we've got chime enabled is another value. We need to tell them at the very beginning to do the same thing. So we're gonna add a start event. And all this is going to do is call update state. Okay, so send custom event. And since we've already built this, we don't need to write it again. We've already written it. So we just call update state. And on start, it will automatically go get the correct value and set the buttons to the correct material. Okay, so now let's go ahead and make a couple of copies of this button. All right, now we've got three of them we can put in the world. All we need to do is back here where we have uh, that update state being called on variable changed, add them into this list. Okay, so now these buttons should all act in sync. If you turn one on, they all turn on. If you turn one off, they all turn off. So let's give that a try. Okay, here we are. Let's give this a try. I definitely heard that join sound as we join the world. All our buttons are on. If we click one, plays a sound, they all turn off. Great. So now let's actually test this by using the Cyan Emu's um, uh, run custom event, which is right here. So let's try on player joined. Should, nothing should happen since this is off. On player left, same. Okay. Now let's toggle. Plays the sound. Plays the sound. Great. Seems to all be working. Okay, so that is basically it. We went over two important concepts in this tutorial. Remember how to talk to cyan triggers between objects. And my way that I like to do that is I use two variables that are named the same thing. Just make sure that you name one red so you know that it is the one that is getting the value from the other place. And this is the place where you're storing it for everybody. On the place where it is being stored for everybody, you also want to have an on variable changed and that you use to update all of the other objects that use that variable. That's how I like to uh, keep everything, uh, keep track of everything in that way. The other thing that we did is we used if statements. Remember, an if is just a test, yes or no, do the thing or don't do the thing. You can add an else if you want to do something if the test was false. And that is under the special menu in the actions. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. You can check out the description for links for where to get Sign Trigger, Sign Emu, and any downloadable prefabs that may go along with this tutorial. See you later.